Juan, and welcome back to another rendition episode round, I don't even know, whatever, we're calling it the Game News Roundup, going over the latest gaming news over the last however many days, several days, week or so, depending on how long it's been since I've done one, but first things first, we'll go over the latest VG Charts estimates from June 26th to July 2nd, which is the final week of June, at least... June is usually a five-week month. I know, right? Five weeks in a month? That doesn't seem right. Usually it's four weeks. Yes, I know. But there's 52 weeks in a year, and if it was four weeks a month, that'd be 48 weeks, you know, four times 12. So four months a year get an extra week. We do it, or at least where I usually do it, would be March, and I think NPD does it as well, March, June, September, and December. Basically, the last month of each quarter gets that fifth week tacked on. So you get the 52 weeks in a year. Although sometimes there is a fifth week in January. January, because it's not exactly 52 weeks. It's like 52 weeks in a day, a couple days. So every bunch of years, you, sometimes you tack on that extra week in January. But going into the halfway point of 2022, the latest estimates for the end of the year. We've got sales up across the board. We've got Switch, just over 300,000 sold in the last week of June. You know, weekend in July 2nd. PS5 just missed 200,000 units. Xbox Series X and S just missed 180,000. PS4, about 9,000. Xbox One, just under 500. Yeah, I know why it sells so low with the old gen consoles as well. Xbox One is no longer in production, so it's the last bit that is left. And Sony has only been producing the last, how was the last quarter, the first quarter of the year, they only released 100,000 PS4, so sales are quite low at this point, and it's just what's available is what's being sold um yeah and lifetime we got switch next week barring any adjustments you know as more more you know data becomes available adjustments always do occur so you know put an asterisk next to the estimates of yes they are estimates but as more data comes out adjustments will happen usually not that big but a okay, uh, once in a while you know we'll get oh okay we gotta make a bigger adjustment than usual but usually within a few percentage points uh usually within Stay within five percentage points, roughly. <laughs> Sometimes a little bit more than that, a little under, but very rarely we, like, you know, way off, like, uh oh <laughs> Big information came out. Okay, let's do what we gotta do. Uh, but anyways, Lifetime. We got the Switch at 109.82 million units sold. Lifetime. Uh, as of July 2nd, it's about to cross 110 million. It is still on track to be passing the PS... I almost said PS5. The PS4 and the original Game Boy. Plus Game Boy Color, because Nintendo puts those figures together, so they treat it as one, as one generation. Um, we got the PS5, 20.84 million sold. Sold, not shipped. Sell through. Uh, as of July 2nd, which uh, one more week, it should be crossing 21 million. Again, uh, barring, you know, adjustments, new data comes available. And we got the Xbox Series X and S at 15.54 million units sold. Uh, which, you know, at its current rate, I don't know, three or four weeks, the end of July, say the end of July, hopefully we'll be crossing about 16 million. So over 16 million. Depends on how stock, it looks like stock has been improving. The last couple of weeks, numbers have gone up for all, all of the consoles, especially the PS5. Uh, but they've all seen to have gone up. I mean, other than the PS4, Xbox One, because, you know, they're still on their downward trend at the end of their life. So uh, looking at the article itself, we've already talked about, yeah, the weekly sales. And then the lifetime estimates. Uh, so yeah, PS5 compared to PS4, same week in 2015, so same number of weeks available, uh, which would be July 4th, week ending July 4th, 2015, for PS4 and Xbox One. So PS5 is down compared to the PS4 by over 59,000 units, or almost 60,000 units, according to latest estimates. Uh, and Xbox One is up by nearly 59,000 units. I swear I didn't do that on purpose. It just so happens that... One is up compared to the previous gen, but I see I'm out. The other one is down, roughly, relatively close because one is over or nearly, generally within a couple thousand, which is kind of funny. But yeah, uh, uh, PS4 this time last year it sold about a quarter of a million, or PS4 last year compared to the same week in 2015, and then the Xbox One at 121,000. The Xbox One sales, whew, it managed to crawl to about 50, just over a little over 50 million or so a lifetime, but. It had a lot of issues, and we now that we know the Xbox Series X and S has sold more than double in Japan so far than the Xbox One sold lifetime. 
The Xbox One sold about 115,000 units lifetime in Japan. We got the Xbox Series X and S at about 260,000 units in, what, about a year and eight months? Nine months? Somewhere around there? So in less than two years, it sold, it sold double, more than double what the Xbox One sold in, what, seven years <laughs> or so? Uh, yeah, it is a bit of a change. You know, also, I mean, you know, Series S being $300, X being 500 and then the PS5 is 400 or 500 depending on if you get the digital-only edition or the main uh, system. But versus the Xbox One, it launched at $500 with Kinect bundled in. The PS4 was 400 And then in June or July, this is the summer 2014, uh, when Phil Spencer had taken over uh, leading Xbox... Um, they just said, yeah, no, this Kinect thing isn't really working, so they have, may release an Xbox One without the Kinect bundled in for 400 and By that point, it was a hard press to come back, and then the first party lineup of Xbox for the whole last year. Well, probably the whole time. Reality, the Xbox One, the Xbox has not had the very strong... It's probably the weakest first party lineup. When you look at the studios and the games released, which over the last bunch of years is changing with Bethesda... You know, Machine Games, it's software, oh, you know, all the Bethesda studios, I guess you say, I should say, ZeniMax Studios. And then, I mean, Sony's required several studios as well, which will be going over that soon enough. Uh, Haven Studios, they have officially required. The deal has closed. And if you're wondering about Activision Blizzard, well, it's going to be a bit, because that's a 60, almost a $70 billion acquisition. Biggest acquisition Microsoft has ever done. The biggest acquisition in gaming by, like, four or five times. You know, Activision Blizzard, I want to say, is... Or will be, you know, was the biggest third-party uh, company in the video game industry. Well, I say they are, but there's no Tencent exists. Tencent is only the biggest, considering they might actually be the bigger than PlayStation revenue-wise. Tencent, they are, I believe, a Chinese company. Well, they own a they own a bunch of studios, or own a stake in a lot of studios. Uh, yeah. So yeah, we got that. Um, and then year-over-year -year sales. So. Comparing the sales and weekend in July 2nd versus the same week a year ago, Switch sales are down by 44,711 units. Again, estimates are about 12.8%. PS5 is down by about 8,200 units, about 4%. Uh, considering how much it was down in the first quarter, PS5 is looking pretty close where it's going to crack to actually being able to be up year over year uh, compared to what it's been. This is each given week. I mean, the whole total sales year today is going to be a bit before it catches up to last year and then hopefully surpass it. Ho I mean, hopefully more stock is available because there's actually shortages for all the consoles. I mean, yeah, PS5 has hit the hardest. You know, Series S, you can generally easily find Series X. The stock is improving, but it still takes a little, can be a little bit to find one. And then the Switch. If you want a normal Switch or a Switch Lite, I mean, they're fairly easy to get. It's the Switch OLED that is hard to find right now. At least from what I've seen. Um, but yeah, year over year, yeah. Xbox up about 22%. And of course, PS4 is down 73%. Xbox One's down 96%. It's just the last few remaining units. Uh, sales week on week. Switch sales are up by over 20,000 units. PS5 is up by over 13,000 units. And the Xbox Series X and S is up by over 8,000 units. Again, this is week on week. So July 2nd compared to the week before. And 2022, year-to-date estimates. We've got the Switch at nearly 8 million sold for the year. Xbox Series X and S and PS5 essentially tied now at 3.87 million units. The Xbox Series X and S is a bit ahead. Because uh, of rounding Xbox uh, estimates, we rounded them down to get the 3.87 million units. And the PS5 was rounded up just slightly to get the 3.87 million. So yeah, I, depending on how sales are the next week, for the year, PS5 might be passing the Xbox Series X and S for 2022 sales uh so yeah we got lifetime america sales uh we actually had the xbox series x and s just a hair above the switch uh looking at there was more a little bit more stock available uh last couple weeks i mean the practically i mean if you think about the whole estimates and the whole like you know trying to be within five percent you know say we're essentially tied ps5 pretty good seventy eight thousand ps4 xbox i mean basically most xbox one sales are in the americas uh, in Europe, Switch, number one, 87,000 units, so almost what it sold in the Americas. PS5, 63,000, about 15,000 less than it sold in the Americas, being U.S., Canada, and Latin America. Europe being, well, all of Europe. 
Well, there's more to say, you know, Europe, you know, UK, Ireland, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Pol you know, Eastern Europe, and then... Oh, there's so many. Belgium, I mean, Denmark, I'm sure I'm going to miss so many. But yeah, basically, Europe is Europe. <laughs> uh, we do have Russia under Europe, by the way. Uh, if you're wondering, even though you look at where Russia, most of Russia is technically in Asia, but you look at its population, it's mainly in, in Europe. But... Sales right now for video game consoles should be pretty much zero, as um, unless they've released more systems again. Uh, but Nintendo, pretty sure Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox all pulled out out of out of Russia because of the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, also, yes, Xbox heavily weighted more towards uh, the Americas. Uh, Worldwide, if you I mean if you look at sales of the Xbox, each Xbox, it's generally been around roughly fifty percent of Xbox sales are coming in the United States, U.S. Just the U.S. About roughly half. I mean, forty-five to fifty-five percent. You know, there's some variation from week to week, but generally speaking, it's roughly half coming in the U.S. While well, PlayStation is more evenly spread out. Especially, the, I think the Switch is probably the most even, mainly because the, you know they're by far the yeah, the only good selling system right now in uh, Japan. Mainly because, you know, say you could say because of stock. Um, but sales in Japan, eh, Switch has been dominating the last few years. Um, so, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so you can see, like, America's, you know, 93,000 for the U.S. Uh, I'm sorry. Xbox in the, US, in the America's 93,000 versus Europe, 47,000. So you're talking about. Not quite double of sales in the Americas. Versus, you'll look at the PS5, 78,000 versus 63,000. It's having nowhere near double. And then the Switch, uh, practically even between the two. Again, these are estimates, barring adjustments. And then Asia, you can see this includes uh, mainland Asia and the Middle East. Uh, Switch, 112,000 units, mainly in Japan. And then PS5, nearly 50,000 units. And Xbox, 33,000. And Oceania, mainly Australia and New Zealand. Um, Switch is dominating. Xbox um, slightly ahead of PS5. I mean, overall lifetime in Oceania, uh, PS5 is still ahead. And Xbox One, or Xbox One, basically just the last few units left are being sold each week. The last bit, that's a little bit. And everyone's wondering, yes, uh, at the end of the year, we will be stop doing uh, tracking Xbox One at the end of the year. And uh, PS4, it depends. On how long Sony's continue uh, releasing fig or sorry, releasing figures, shipping shipping PS4s. Uh, end of this year, more than likely by the end of next year, depending on how long they keep shipping. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, they've only been shipping like a hundred thousand units a quarter, which isn't much. At least the first quarter of this year, so we'll see what they say. So uh, yeah, that is pretty much it for the latest estimates for. BG Charts. So moving on to the latest gaming news. I mean, I did talk about this last week, but God of War Ragnarok, for anyone who missed it, is coming for the PS5 and PS4 on November 9th. November 9th. PS5 and PS4 owners. This is definitely probably the most, i say the most anticipated upcoming game on the PS5, but I don't know. It's either that or Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man 2. And I don't know which one is bigger. I'm looking forward to both of them, but, you know. And Square Enix had delayed Forspoken to January 2023 from October 11th. I think it's the second or third time it's been delayed. But hey, you know what? If a game needs an extra few months to be better, be more polished, go for it. I'd rather a game be delayed than be launched as a buggy mess. Heck, I can only imagine Halo Infinite if it actually launched with the Xbox Series XS. Oh, God. Oh, man. I mean, the game was solid enough when it came out, but man, the lack of content since it's come out has been a. Oof, I love Halo, but I haven't really played Infinite, even multiplayer, here in a while. <laughs> it's just, yeah, there's nothing new. Bring me to go back to play it. Hopefully, we'll get more updates more frequently with more content. We'll see. Um, again, pretty sure I talked about this last week, but Microsoft Act. Ac Activision Blizzard acquisition is being investigated by UK regulators. Yeah, basically any place that Activision Blizzard has uh, studios based in, yeah, there's going to be, uh, you know, governments, regulators looking into it. 
I still look, I'm assuming it's still, I mean, I'm still expecting the deal to close eventually. I mean, Microsoft said it'll close the current fiscal year, which runs July 2022 to June 2023. So we have upwards of like 11 months until it might close. I'm guessing the end of the year, early next year. We'll see. The uh, acquisition was announced in January. So it was middle of January, I believe. Uh, but yeah, UK's looking into it. It's to be expected. Especially if it was in such a big acquisition. Because I'm pretty sure similar things happen when they went to acquire Zeni... ZeniMax, at least some, maybe not to the same level, because ZeniMax was a private company and nowhere near as big as Activision Blizzard, at least if you look at revenue. Probably even number... Yeah, even number of developers. I think there's as many people working in Blizzard than, like, all of Xbox's first-party studios combined. <sighs> so, anyways... Bright Memory Infinite is coming to the PS5, Xbox Series X, S, and Switch. Yeah, no, it seems kind of odd. On July 21st, um, according to uh, listings on the PlayStation Store, Microsoft Store, and Nintendo eShop, I'm like, it's coming to Switch. It's coming to Switch. It should be able to run on the PS4 and Xbox One, but unless it's a... Oh, actually, never mind. Like, unless it's a cloud version that I see down here. On the other end, this power spectrum, the Switch version, which runs natively on hardware. Yeah, and not through the cloud. Yeah. It's going to be a bit downgraded, but, you know, the Switch is... Uh, compared to the latest consoles, man, it's way underpowered. I'm just hoping that the next Nintendo console is close, it, close enough to the Series S in power that it makes porting games to it easier. Games run better, hopefully. Uh, let's see. Fall Guys, since it has gone free to play, has topped 50 million players. Two weeks since it's gone free to play. Two weeks! It also came out, we got PS5, Xbox Series X, and X, Xbox One, Switch, <clears throat> and PC on the Epic Game Store. Beforehand, it was available on PS4 and PC on Steam, I believe. Uh, came out on August 4th, 2020. But it's now available on other consoles and is free to play now. I want to. I haven't looked. I haven't played it, so I'm not totally sure. I think there might be like a battle pass type system on it. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I, I don't play Fall Guys. Uh, moving on. Oh yeah, UK. Chris Christopher Dring at um, Games Industry who uh, releases UK Europe f yeah, figures and stuff for June. Uh, Switch sales are up 24% month on month. PS5 sales are up about 2%. Xbox Series X and S sales up 31%. And these are month on month. Overall console, of course, overall, he says console sales are down year over year. He did mention the PS5 was number one, but sales are neck and neck. And with this, I was able to do some minor tweaks to our UK estimates, which, uh, to get everything to line up with everything he said, every, you know, he releases. <laughs> He'll have a full breakdown soon. Later this week, I, I am guessing. Potentially the Europe breakdown, or maybe that'll be next week. Uh, but yeah, it was PS5, Xbox Series X, and S, and then Switch in third place. But he did mention that all the sales were relatively neck and neck. Um, and when I went ran through all the numbers and everything, he said we basically have the PS5 like a thousand years ahead of the Xbox Series X and S, and four or five, and that's four or five thousand years ahead of the Switch. So fairly neck. You know, listen to like all right, what he says and what he said previously, and come up with better UK estimates, which I've done the adjustments already. Again, it was only it was only a few thousand units. It was a bit, very little of way of needed of adjustments. Uh, let's see. Ah, yes, Halo fans. <clears throat> a Halo veteran has joined Three Four Three Industries as technical uh, design director. Um, Paul Bertone. Um, he worked on all of the Bungie Halo games. One, two, three. ODST and Reach. So yeah, Joseph Staten um, has announced, Joseph Staten being um, <clears throat> the head of creative of Halo Infinite at uh, 343 Industries, he, yeah, he announced it on Twitter. Someone he was friends with and worked together for a long time at Bungie until Bungie left uh, Microsoft, became independent, you know, became an independent studio. Joseph Staten, I believe, stayed at Xbox, but didn't go to 343 Industries, was doing other stuff at Xbox. Um... So getting more guys back from Bungie's work on Halo to come back. Maybe, you know, we'll get some more nostalgic stuff. More, I'm hoping to see some classic maps eventually come in. Which would be nice. Uh, sad news. Uh, I'm sure most of you have heard this. But the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, passed away last week. The age of 60. 
in a not so bright way they found his body floating 300 meters off the coast of, Na of nago city wearing snorkeling equipment um they're going to investigate it but it sounds like it was an accident on snorkeling and something something has happened but yeah he created yogi in 1996 and it was published in the weekly shonen jump until 2004 which obviously then you had the popular anime you got the trading card games and ton of Yu-Gi-Oh! video games whether it's just kind of the trading card game digitally or actual more specific games that are Yu-Gi-Oh! but yeah I used Pass Away the most recent Yu-Gi-Oh! game Master Duel released this year in January PS5, Xbox Series X and now Switch PS4, Xbox One and for the PC <sighs> yeah I mean I woke up I saw that news like uh, I, I watched I mind you I haven't thought about Yu-Gi-Oh! really thought about Yu-Gi-Oh! or played it since I was in high school? I'm trying to remember. Was it might have been middle school or high school when I, I I did for a little bit and then I went to Ma then I swapped to Magic the Gathering. It was when the anime first hit the US. I can't remember when exactly that was. I was either, it was either like seventh or eighth grade, maybe ninth or tenth grade for me. And then I really didn't I really got into Magic the Gathering and I've got I've got a box of probably like ten thousand plus Magic the Gathering cards that are Probably 20, potentially upwards of 30 years old. Almost 30 years old? Because I think Magic the Gathering started in 93. Oh, I, I got a lot of old cards. And cards up to like the mid-2000s, late late 2000s. And I, had, and I played Pokemon when that was uh, new. I played Gen 1, and then I stopped after that. So I, played, I was in the Pokemon for a couple years, and that was it. I still got all my old cards. I've recently been buying... Some new cards, so I've been getting the nostalgia and just, you know, replaying all, you know, getting the new games and getting some of the new packs. I am, it will be streamed. Uh, Pokemon Go has had its own uh, Pokemon trading card set. I did order a, I think it was an e Radiant Eevee box. I, it, it's, it'll be here in the next week or two. I'll be opening that up on stream as well. I've got a Lego set. I've got a Halo. No, sorry. Be Mega Blocks, actually. I think you're not like, wait, no, it wouldn't be, be Lego. Mega Blocks, Halo Needler, that to put together, which I have a couple of shelves. Not that I put them up behind me, considering the wall's right here. I'd be hitting it all the time. <laughs> if I had more room to move the desk, and have shelves behind me with, like, cool things you guys could look at, but I, I've thought about ways of rearranging the room, and it's just nothing really works. Cause the big desk, you've got a big bed, TV stand, all that, what, and all that, and whatnot. <sighs> Anyways. Moving on, Blizzard. They are committed to bringing back BlizzCon next year. Blizzard Entertainment President Mike Ybarra uh, said the company is looking to bring back BlizzCon. Um, we recently hired a new leader of BlizzCon, April McKee, who is hard at work on that plan. We are committed to bringing it back in 2023. It has not had an in-person event since, unsurprisingly, 2019. It was canceled in 2020. It was an online-only event in 2021. There's going to be a hybrid event this year, so parse some in person, but less people, and then as well as some digital stuff. But that was canceled following all the sexual harassment, discrimination, scandals, and activation Blizzard. Um, let's see. Xbox has announced they will be attending Gamescom in August 2022, August 24th to the 28th. Um, so, Xbox in a press release. Uh, following our recent Xbox and Bethesda games showcase, we're excited to confirm. That Xbox will be back on the show floor at Gamescom 2022 in Cologne, Germany. Fans in Europe and around the world can expect updates on some announced games coming to Xbox in the next 12 months. And a chance to hang out as a community again in person. So I wouldn't expect any big announcements or any games we didn't see at the Bethesda Xbox and Bethesda Showcase. We'll get a better look into some of the games already announced. Or people who are there in person will be able to actually, you know, play them. Uh, but Xbox released more details in early August. They didn't say anything about an actual showcase of any type. Maybe they'll do a, a short one showcasing upcoming games. Uh, but yeah, PlayStation, Nintendo, Activision, Blizzard, Take-Two, and Wargaming, a bunch of other gaming companies have already said they won't be attending Gamescom this year. So Xbox of the Beta 3 will be the only one at Gamescom. Uh, oh, that's right. Also, speaking of gaming conventions, the big one. E3 is set to return to 2023, this time being held to run by the PAX organizers, Reed Pop. The uh, Penny Arcade, <laughs> Penny Arcade Expo, if that's what PAX stands for, I'm not totally sure, I've never actually been to one, but they have really popular expos. 
I'm expecting that means there'll be more stuff available for the public to come in. Because I remember earlier, E3 was basically just for the for most of the days was just for the press, and then like the last day or two was available for the public. I've never actually gone to an E3 in person. I mean, it'd be cool to get to one, but I live in New York. It's in Los Angeles, so it's the price of the flight. You know, hotel for however for a week or whatever it would be. It wouldn't be cheap. We don't have the website, of, the website, the money at VG Charts to pay me or some of us to go to E3. I mean, I can still cover all the gaming news and announcements from home. You know, they, everything's put online as it is, whether in press releases or just during the showcases. You know, just rounding up the gaming news and stuff that's getting announced and showcased. So yeah, uh, E3 organizers, uh, we are thrilled to bring back E3 as an in-person event with Raid Pop, a global leader in producing pop culture events. So it'll be, they also said, the second week of June 2023. So looking at this calendar, June 2023, that would mean the 10th. Second week. Oh, well, it's this second week. I don't know, because probably the 12th, maybe? Probably the week of the 12th. Think about the second full week. It's probably the week of the 12th, would be my guess. Maybe with some uh, showcases going on the 10th and the 11th, and then actual in person stuff that week of the 12th. I'm guessing maybe 11th to the well, well we'll know more next year hopefully it doesn't actually get canceled oh uh, yeah breed pop also does besides pax egx star wars celebration uh new york comic-con and more uh let's see npd analyst matt piscatella has released his predictions for the rest of 2022 um he expects the video game market uh this is u.s predictions npd you know does u.s stuff uh, overall revenue for the video game market to be lower than it's been in the last couple of years, which with the pandemic, I mean, it's be expected to sales to be down, but to still be up by quite a bit compared to 2019. That's the best way to, to judge is how sales are now compared to where they were in 2019, 2018 and whatnot. Cause, uh, video game sales in the pandemic shot up and went through the roof and demand was crazy. The opposite of movies, the demand dropped like a rock cause movie theaters were closed in 2020 and then it took a while for things really start picking up later on in 2021 uh yeah and let's see what we got uh yeah he expects shortages to continue uh to 2023 especially uh, excuse me especially when it comes to the ps5 and xbox series x it's just that ps5 and series x um but yeah, he expects, he expects shortage to settle. Um, hardware shortages will yeah, continue into 2023, particularly the PS5 Series X, while potentially impacting other seg segments such as VR. Uh, I'm not totally surprised. Shortage is going to be coming for a while. But he didn't mention the Xbox Series X and S will be the only console to see an improvement in revenue and dollar sales. Not units sold, but the amount of money it brings in year over year. So I guess he's expecting PS5 to actually still be down year over year for all of this year. I guess you know, it's been down so far this year and I'll take quite a bit, even if it is up each month. It's got a has a bit to catch up compared to last year. Um, he expects the Switch to be the number one console sold, uh, units sold that is. And while dollar sales are expected to be too, he says too close to call. Obviously, you think Switch, you got the two hundred dollar light, the three hundred dollar normal Switch, and the three hundred fifty dollar Switch OLED versus the three hundred dollar Series S, five hundred dollar Series X versus. The $400 PS5 Digital and the $500 Standard PS5. So, dollar sales, yes, yeah, Switch be number one, but then you think of dollar, you know, revenue. The Switch has more to do to sell to be equivalent to the others because of the price difference. Um, he also predicts Elden Ring to be the best selling video game in the U.S. in 2022, which is the only, th which would be the only third time since 2019. Call of Duty game did not finish in first place, of course. Elden Ring was had basically the entire year to sell. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 comes out. I'm forgetting. October? November? So it'll only have like a couple months of sales. Uh, but he also predicts Call of Duty to be the best selling franchise for the 14th year straight because obviously you think of the last year's Call of Duty still selling and whatnot. Um, but his his predictions for the 10 best selling video games in alphabetical order. So these aren't like a specific order. We got Modern Warfare 2. Oh. Elden Ring, God of War, Ragnarok, Gotham Knights, Horizon Forbidden West, 
Lego Star Wars the Skywalker Saga, Madden NFL 23, NBA 2K23, Pokemon Legends Arceus, and Pokemon Scarlet Violet. That's what he's predicting to be the 10 best-selling games of this year. In no particular order in the fact that he has Elden Ring at number one, I'd assume Modern Warfare 2 would probably be number two. And after that, it's a kind of a crapshoot to say what would be one. Although I feel like Pokemon is pretty big. I mean, God of War would be a big release, but it won't have, it'll only have a little less than two months of sales. Horizons Forbidden West is now being bundled with the, P of the PS5. At least partially bundled. There are some available bundles. Um, yeah. Uh, moving on. Psychonauts 2! Physical release coming out September 27th for anyone who's interested in physical releases. Uh, we've got PlayStation uh, download charts. So the PlayStation store charts for June were released. So on the PlayStation store, PS5. In the US and Canada, we got the Quarry at number one, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order at number two, NBA, MLB, GTA 5. The top five, and then Europe, we got Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order in first versus second in the U.S. Quarry in second instead of first, which is like it is in the U.S. And we got Lego in second, Among Us in fourth, considering how cheap, <clears throat> considering, you know, and it's the eighth in the U.S. charts. We got GTA 5 in fifth, actually for both. Cyberpunk is in sixth place in Europe, <clears throat> and then FIFA, Far Cry, and one not going down, top 20. And then PS4, number one in the U.S., Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, number one, PS4, U.S. and Canada charts, versus, unsurprisingly, FIFA, because football, slash soccer, depending on where you live, is by far the biggest sport in Europe, in most of the world. The only places it might not be number one would be what, the U.S., Canada, North America, I guess, maybe Japan, uh, Norway, I'm not even trying to think, like, our U.S. would be... American football is bigger. Hockey's bigger. Baseball is bigger. Basketball is bigger than soccer slash football. And then I want to say probably I'm be surprised in Canada if uh, hockey or ice hockey would be number one. It's all just guesses. I'm not really totally sure. Uh, but anyways, we got Minecraft at number two for both charts on the PS4. GTA five, Red Dead two in the U.S. and fourth, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in fourth, which I believe. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's Teenage Mutant in, uh, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles in Europe. There's a different name in Europe. Uh, PlayStation VR, Beat Saber is number one. Job Simulator is number two. Super Hot VR is number three. That's pretty much what it's been for months and months, the top three. I don't think it's pretty much hasn't changed much, at least the top two. As I've never seen, Beat Summer is always number one. Job Simulator always seems to be number two. PlayStation VR. We don't know when PSVR 2 is coming out yet. And the top free-to-play games, Fall Guys, <laughs> Fortnite, Guerrilla Champions, top three for both, and you get Apex Legends in fourth in the U.S. Canada, then eFootball 2022 in Europe, I mean, yeah, football, this is meshing being really popular, you got COD Warzone in fifth in the U.S., Rocket League, fifth place in the Europe. Again, these are PlayStation Store download charts that Sony releases every month on the PlayStation blog. Uh, then we have a new Robot Cop game coming out June 23rd. Just over on a Saturday, which is different, but uh, yeah. June 23rd. So Robot Cop Rogue City. We have a gameplay reveal. Let's lower that volume. If anyone's curious about Robot Cop. A new crime wave that is sweeping Detroit has already claimed the lives of 21 police officers. Disturbance? I'm a big fan. Uh oh. There he is! Uh, if you haven't seen Robocop, man, this is a great movie. It's terrible, but amazing at the same time. Can you fly? There's something about some movies with the special effects, even if it's somewhat dated, it just feels more real than CG. So yeah, your tank, your Robocop. You are a cop that was basically left for dead after being shh. Your yeah, hand was blown off or something? I'm trying to remember, and then he turned into a robot. Slash cop. What the hell is this? Where is all the money? 
We all saw it hesitate in a life and death situation. Why? Listen, I would trust this guy with my kids. The I mean, human tank with a mission for justice. Just uh, yes, yeah. that that is the best way to describe it. Yeah. That are alive, you are coming with me. Oh, there he is with the mask off. Uh, yeah. Moving on. Let's see what we what we got. Skull and Bones. All right, yeah, let's go to Skull and Bones. It comes out November eighth for PS five, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. It was originally announced for the PS four and Xbox One like five years ago. So let's take a quick look at these. I say a quick look. A bit more than a quick look, but we got cinematic trailer. Skull and Bones. Imagine. Sea of Thieves, but with more realistic visuals. <laughs> so I'm just gonna describe it. Society just see what I mean. Has rules. My God, this is cinematic. This is not in game right it now. Decides where you belong. It's a multiplayer open world pirate game. But you, you can chart a new course. Big storm. Uh, Even when death seems a certainty, do not give up. On the shores of a new world, you awaken. You awaken alone in a new, strange land. And more determined than sharks. ever to carve a life of your choice. Fighting under our own flag, we will take what's ours. Pirates. We have pirates. It's like potentially larger battles, ship battles than you see it. The Sea of Thieves is so popular, I don't... Together, we will take on the uh, world. Wait, I always hope a game's gonna be good. You know. but Developers today, spend a lot of hard time and work making their games. Where you belong. So this game has been development for years. Way. Ubisoft original. Yeah, it's a Ubisoft game. I'm sure if you didn't know. Time to work kind of someone watched Flash of the Caribbean on Stranger Ties, yeah, right? Uh all the Pirates movies. I only ever really enjoyed Welcome the first to one. Skull and Bones. So yeah, um the visuals are slightly less than the cinematic trailer. Our game takes place during the golden age of piracy in a world inspired piracy. by the beautiful yet dangerous Indian Ocean. You'll start your journey as an outcast. Indian Ocean. His goal is to the become Caribbean. the most infamous pirate to sail to these treacherous waters. Oh. After surviving a ship, Seven and a half minutes. you begin your adventure we'll may, we may watch something around one of the pirate dens in our world. Dens are centers so, of pirate you know. activity where you can craft new ships and More realistic looking sea of for your expeditions at sea. Pick up contracts and socialize with other players. Any pirate worth their salt will tell you that preparation is key to success. Get ready for any challenges that come your way by checking that your cargo is stocked with items like food and ammunition. Once you're set, it's time to head out and explore. I'm going to assume as a rookie pirate, you'll only have access your crew to is AI. Game. Unlike in Sea of Thieves, where you go out with friends on your team. Isn't the Indian Ocean a love between? Play style. At sea, 
You'll need to pay close yes. attention to the condition of your ship it is. and the morale of your crew. Your crew India. are a pack of vicious raiders and rovers who will meet you against you, you know, if not kept well fed and yes, happy. It's between. If your ship sinks, you'll lose some progress and respawn at the nearest discovered den or outpost. Yeah, south of Asia. The good news is East that of most Africa, of your cargo west will be recovered, of Australia. and you'll have the opportunity to retrieve there. the rest from the wreckage. But you'd better be quick, as other players can also steal it. As a pirate captain, your reputation is everything, and our game tracks this through infamy. The higher your infamy, the more opportunities you'll get. One of the many ways to grow your infamy is to take up contracts. So, These are deals that infamy, you can make with other pirates contracts. in the world. Take out other pirates. Can have great rewards if you're ships. successful, or costs if you fail. You can also gain infamy I mean, by completing other activities. See if thieves had a price of the Caribbean DLC. Plundering, treasure hunts, investigations, dynamic events, and much more. You can undertake these either solo or with other players. The world of so, Skull Bones is filled with riches and resources. See if thieves, you have you and your crew, which is your actual you friends and people you play with on one ship. Lagoons it looks like rivers are teeming with dangerous each person has their own ship and their own AI crew in this. And be wrong, but that's what it You'll looks like. You'll also be able to harvest a variety of raw materials, such as ore and wood, that can be refined and used for crafting. Yep. Crafting is an essential activity crafting. for you to progress as an All infamous right. pirate. Obtain like blueprints and use your refined resources to craft stronger ships, weapons, and armors. In Skull and Bones, ships serve many different purposes. Cargo ships are slower, but useful if you need to transport large volumes of loot. Mm -hmm. Navigation ships sail faster, but have less cargo space and lower hull HP. Firepower ships have more gun ports, allowing ah. you to deal higher damage, but are more challenging if I were, to maneuver. See, if I were to play the game, I'd be that one. Can craft a wide I'd be the tank ship. Weapons and That's how I am in every game. <laughs> I'm like, to right, how powerful can I get? Rocket Always the tank. As well as different armor types, which have varying strengths and weaknesses against incoming attacks. With your new fleet and growing arsenal, create a loadout based on your personal playstyle to become a force of destruction. World 42. No, Out what? in the open ocean, opportunities and threats mm -hmm. are abundant. Use your spyglass to identify lucrative trade routes or wealthy merchant ships and assess so you've got your AI ships you can and firepower. Go after. Strategize a plan of attack based on your opponent's defenses and take advantage of their weak points to deal with. I'm assuming damage. you can come across other come across other Sinking players. Sinking your foes from afar yeah. rewards you with only a portion of their cargo, as some of it will be lost to the depths. Getting ram close to execute a boarding maneuver. I wonder if you could ram the side of another ship but and see where you can turn damage. from predator to prey in a heartbeat if you attract the unwanted attention of privateers, the merciless pirate hunters that patrol the seas. If you enjoy the thrill of the hunt, you can also seek out other players and rain terror on them. Such PvP battles are high stakes activities ah, that can course. be rewarding Old school if type you emerge victorious. Machine cannon thing? From your spoils of battle, personalize your individual look with outfits yeah, that command course. respect. Customize your character looks. That's how it is in front of any game. You can also select from a multitude of ship customization options customize to your ship. fear in your enemies. Yep. Expected. With the wind in your sails, journey to the furthest reaches of the Indian Ocean, from Indian the coast Ocean. of Africa to the East Indies. Encounter extreme weather events like violent storms and monstrous road waves. Keep your eyes peeled for outposts, which are safe spots where you'll be able to dock your ship for a short rest from the perilous seas. Safe Here, zones, that's you good. You can trade with traveling merchants and clandestine smugglers. What are you supposed to be again? I mean, it's a video game, Emerald. Goods. 
Have you ever played Uncovered like Assassin's Creed? They're not always the most accurate. As you decipher the least. treasure maps obtained through okay. your voyage. They're historical fiction. Although all the content in Skull and Bones can be done solo, you might enjoy ruling the seas with your friends. While sailing, you can also easily invite other pirates you encounter to group up. Synergize your different play styles, ships, and weapons to defeat deadlier enemies. As you grow stronger, take on more difficult challenges, such as attacking forts and plundering settlements. And, if you're bold enough, engage in dynamic events, like taking down heavily laden merchant ships and their fleet of warship escorts. Now, it's up to you to write your own story. Remember, there is no one path to follow, no one way to play. The mm -hmm. world of Skull and Bones is yours to discover. Skull and Bones! It's a Ubisoft original. Yep, as it's <laughs> the cinematic trailer. So yeah, November 8th, which is an odd day to release a game because God of War comes out the very next day. I feel like one of those games is going to be a bit more popular than the others, but you never know. I mean... It looks interesting, but it looks it looks like it took a whole, whole lot of inspiration from Sea of Thieves. A whole lot. A whole lot. A ton. <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but, hey, if you're interested in it, go for it. If you like Sea of Thieves, you'll probably enjoy Skull and Bones. Uh, let's see. If you are subscribed to the Nintendo Switch Online and the expansion pack, we are getting... A new game added. A new N64 game. Puzzle League on Friday, July 15th. Uh, let's see. Go through actual stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, Final Fantasy VII. The remakes. The devs were at one point considering making it two parts. But they decided in the end to go on a trilogy. Three games instead of two. Um, they are also diverging, which has been previously announced, they're diverging from the original story of Final Fantasy VII and making changes. So it's not just like, all right, we're just making a remake. They're making a lot of changes. Let's see. It Takes Two has now sold over 7 million units worldwide. Uh, I'm just quickly going to go through. We got a new Terminator game. A survival game. Terminator. Yeah, I know. It's going to yell at me about the age restrictions. All right, so 30 seconds. Doesn't show much. Just a little tease. We don't. They didn't say much about this game. Like it's a survival game and it's Terminator. I do wonder if it's like Dead by Daylight, where one person is the Terminator and everyone else has to survive. T eight hundred. I think. I think we gotta be careful with that music. <laughs> Terminator music. Ah, it could be an issue. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, the more details will be released later on. Not much was announced in the well announcement. Uh, we have other Rockstar games. Uh, a couple of things. First things first. Uh, they announced they will be stopping to do any major updates to Red Dead Online. They'll still be doing updates to Red Dead Online, but instead of having big updates, they're going to have smaller content updates coming to Red Dead Online, which is the online portion of a Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, the reason for this is so they're going to put more focus on the next Grand Theft Auto, which is probably going to be GTA 6, or what, maybe it'll be called something different, but Grand Theft Auto 6 makes the most sense. Um, and going along with this, rumors uh, that the PS5 and Xbox Series X next versions of Red Dead Redemption 2 have been cancelled. And of course it was reported last week that Rockstar were working on uh, GTA 4 and Red Dead 1 remasters, but they were canceled following the lackluster yes, of, of the <laughs> Grand Theft Auto Trilogy definition, uh, Definitive Edition. Let's just say they were not well received because they weren't well done. They, they kind of just didn't do it right. Just they felt different. And if these remasters are going to be the same, I'm probably, yeah, that's probably a good thing. I mean, they could have just upscaled them. Higher resolution, higher frame rate, you know gonna work but you know apparently there were ps5 and xbox series x and x versions of red dead 2 were in development but were canceled uh, according to rockstar insider tes 2 uh it's because he says well you know they're focused they want to focus on gta 6 it's been a long time 
since we've had a new GTA, which has been even longer since Skyrim came out, but you know. GTA uh, 5 came out in 20, September 2013? It's definitely 2013. It's right before the PS4 and Xbox One came out. They were originally 360 and um, PS3 games before they came out to the, to the PS4 and Xbox One like a year later than a year or two after that came to PC. Um, I think that's going to be about it for this rendition episode of the Game News Roundup. So as always, if you've enjoyed this, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe if you want to watch this live. Twitch.tv slash TrunkStubBD. So hope you all have enjoyed. See you all next time for some more Game News Roundup.